Hey, Twig, you want to help us get out of here? There's something I need you to get. In 17 days. The thing I wore on my hand. We told you it was this big. <laughs> That's my underwear. Okay. Let's just agree to never discuss this. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. All kinds of Marvel bombs being dropped for all the movies, but the biggest thing is Adam Warlock. We got so much information about his character in the MCU. So really good news, if you're a big fan of the Adam Warlock character, he is coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, confirmed. There was a bunch of people talking about it at the junket for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So there's a couple hoops to jump through, it's a little complicated. But if you're new to the channel, I do Marvel videos every week, be sure to subscribe to get everything. There's even a Spider-Man giveaway going on that I'll explain at the end of the video. But what happened is, is that James Gunn was doing a bunch of Q&As for the film a couple months ago, like, hey, the first trailer's out, what do you guys think? This is so amazing. There were a couple things he revealed were cut out during the treatment stage when he was writing the screenplay. And one of those things was a really big character that he wanted to include, but there were just too many people and he didn't want to sacrifice the Mantis character because she was a little more important to the story of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 than this other really favorite character of his. So now it's come out during the junket that that favorite character was Adam Warlock himself. So for everybody who was complaining, where's Adam Warlock? He's so important for the Soul Gem, for the Thanos storyline and Infinity Gauntlet. Now we have the answer. So they always change things from the comics to the MCU movies, but Kevin Feige in a separate interview just confirmed that he would be part of Guardians 3. Now they could always change their mind about that, but they did say that he'd be an important part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe eventually. Guardians 3 would be the jumping off point for that, so that kind of low-key confirms that Adam Warlock isn't going to be in Infinity War or the fourth Avengers film, which I think is fine. Like, if they're not going to do the Soul Gem, Adam Warlock storyline, which I'll explain in a second, then they might as well do something completely different. But they also confirmed that the third Guardians film, which will be Phase 4, will be the last story with the current roster. Now, that doesn't mean that every single character in the Guardians movies won't come back for like a fourth Guardians film or they won't make a fourth Guardians film, but it'll probably look more like what's going on with Iron Man and the other Marvel films. Like, there hasn't been a fourth Iron Man film, but there have been a lot of movies with Iron Man in it, so you'll probably see the Guardians characters pop up in other people's cosmic movies. But when everybody saw that Ayesha was going to be a really big character, and in the comics, her name is Kismet, she's created by the same group of people that create Adam Warlock. They're all created using these cocoons, the one that we saw in the collector's workshop, which James Gunn confirmed is actually not Adam Warlock's cocoon, so a lot of people were disappointed about that. But when Ayesha showed up, it's like, Oh my god, even though they're calling them the Sovereign and it's a slightly different group of people, there was a lot of confusion because it's like, oh my god, does this mean they're laying seeds for Adam Warlock? His people are debuting in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Does that mean that he's somewhere in the background? So because James Gunn is such a big comic book nerd, and even though minor things get changed, he's relatively true to people's origins in the comics, when we do see Adam Warlock, we will see a version of the cocoon, and the storyline will probably be something closer to his Annihilation Conquest storyline, which is really interesting because that's the storyline of the modern Guardians team, this one right here, coming together in the comics. But most of you know about the big changes they already made to that storyline. Ultron was the big villain, the Phalanx, Star-Lord, the other Guardians, went to Adam Warlock to get help with that. So Adam Warlock was a big part of that Guardians team, but Cosmo is also there. James Gunn also said that Cosmo, the big problem with that, is that it just looks weird next to a CG rocket on screen. So it's more of a technical problem than a character problem when it comes to Cosmo. But Adam Warlock had already been through the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, Infinity Watch, and a whole bunch of Jim Starlin classic 70s stories, even through the 90s, before he ever participated in this Annihilation Conquest storyline. So there's a lot of deep Adam Warlock cuts that they could pull from whenever they bring him on screen. Just don't expect it to be exactly like the comics, because so much of that is tied up with Thanos, the Infinity Gems, in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, which is largely being mined 
for the Infinity War movies, so there's going to be a whole bunch of changes, but don't worry, obviously I'll do videos for that stuff when we start to get more information. If you've never read an Adam Warlock story, so he debuted way, way back in the 60s in a Fantastic Four comic. He was created by this group called the Enclave. They do a lot of genetic engineering. They want to create these perfect people. That's who the Sovereign are in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. This race of genetically perfect people, they all look gold. The Enclave in the comics is really just a group of scientists on Earth that created Adam Warlock. But he came out of that cocoon looking all gold. He was meant to be this Christ-like figure who then went on to gain possession of the Soul Gem and use it to save this planet called Counter-Earth from a big attack. Then he learns about the Universal Church of Truth led by this corrupt figure called the Magus. In the big shocking reveal we learn is that the Magus is a corrupted future version of Adam Warlock who's been corrupted by the power of the Soul Gem come back in time to just be this conquering figure. So Adam Warlock himself changes his own timeline, so it becomes this time travel story. And then during the Marvel team-up comics, he runs afoul of Thanos and learns about the other five gems. So you start to get an inkling of the idea of the Infinity Gauntlet. So Thanos gains possession of the gems, this is all before the Infinity Gauntlet, and wants to use them to destroy Earth's sun. There's a team up, they defeat him, and eventually Adam Warlock gets transmuted into the Soul Gem itself, which has this place called the Soul World, which is a pocket dimension that houses all the souls that the Soul Gem takes. That's its power, it has the power to control souls. So when people say that Adam Warlock is trapped inside the Soul Gem, it's just like a small pocket universe. He later comes back out after the Silver Surfer goes around trying to tell people that Thanos is trying to assemble the Infinity Gauntlet. So this is all during Thanos' quest. Like, oh my god, Thanos has this crazy idea to alter the universe by combining all the Infinity Gems. So he goes into the Soul Gem to get Adam Warlock's help. You have the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Adam Warlock gains possession of the Gauntlet by the end of that. The Living Tribunal gives him this order that he has to separate all the gems because they're too dangerous together. Then Adam Warlock goes on to create the Infinity Watch. And then if you've heard of the Infinity War comic book, that's very different from the Infinity War movie. So the Infinity War movie is based on the Infinity Gauntlet comic book storyline. The Infinity War comic book storyline came after the Infinity Gauntlet. And that gets really trippy. It's kind of confusing. But Adam Warlock has two different selves that get separated from him. One is the Magus, remember I talked about him, and the other is the Goddess. So there's these two aspects of Adam Warlock that serve as the antagonist for the Infinity War storyline in the comics. They're probably not going to do that in the movies, so you don't need to worry about it if you haven't read it. It was just meant to be a sequel to the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. If you've heard about the Cancerverse in the more recent Adam Warlock stories, I mean, it's still a while ago, but it's kind of an old story. That took place after Annihilation Conquest, where the Magus comes back, the Universal Church of Truth, and the Cancerverse become a big thing. So right now, the stand-in for the Cancerverse, if they ever do a story like that with the Marvel Universe, is sort of Doctor Strange's Dark Dimension, which is ruled over by Dormammu. So if they ever want to do Cancerverse, they'll probably substitute Dormammu in the Dark Dimension for that. Whatever they do with Guardians 3 and Adam Warlock, it'll probably serve as a jumping off point for that character if they want to continue to use him in the Marvel Universe. And there are a couple of big characters that they do introduce in Guardians 2, like Ego the Living Planet, that will continue to be big people in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not just the Guardians films. But some of the characters that they introduce, some of the post credit scenes, are kind of spoilery. So I will do a separate post credit scene video when we get closer to the movie coming out. But most people haven't seen the movie, so try not to post spoilers in the comments below. Because some of you might get to see it before other people. But the other cool thing that James Gunn revealed is that the third Guardians film would serve as the end of a singular story that would comprise all three Guardians films. But make sure you stay through the entire end credits because there are a couple big things that happen that directly hat tip what they're going to be following up on. So they're like a couple clear jumping off plot points that they set up for the third Guardians film. But we can talk about that when we get closer to the movie because it does get kind of spoilery. 
So what's gonna happen next is, is they dropped a whole bunch of Marvel bombs. There's new Thor Ragnarok, there's new Black Panther. So I'll try to get those videos out as fast as possible. There's also some really cool Rick and Morty stuff. But like I said, there's a new round of the Spider-Man giveaway. All you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. While you wait for more Marvel, you can click here to learn all about Captain Marvel and Spider-Man in that fourth Avengers film. And you can click here for a brand new Game of Thrones promo breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. Let's high five. I'll see you guys in the next video.